Hi everybody, my name is Griffin Bridgers. Today's video is about a recent private letter ruling, PLR 2022-39006, which dealt with the subject of revoking a Section 643E3 election. Before I get started, I want to remind you this presentation is not intended to substitute for legal or tax advice and is provided for educational purposes only. Now to set the stage, there's always some introductory lessons that we can take away from any private letter ruling like this, because usually the ruling deals with relief for some election or failure to make an election at some point or some inadvertent act. So today's introductory lessons really deal with how you treat a discretionary principal distribution from a trust or an estate. With complex trusts or estates, uh, depending on the terms of the will or trust that governs those types of entities, you usually have the option to distribute income or principal or both to the beneficiaries, usually within the discretion of an executor for an estate or a trustee for a trust. However, there's no taxable income to the trust or to the beneficiary on these types of discretionary principal distributions. Now, I contrast that with the use of an in-kind distribution to satisfy pecuniary gifts or as a substitution for a gift of specific property. In those scenarios, if the discretion isn't to the distribution itself, but as to how you fill the distribution, then there could be some gain, uh, as mentioned in the case of Keenan versus Commissioner, which is a subject we'll cover another time. But for today's purposes, really what we're focused on is this fully discretionary distribution, not, dis not discretionary in terms of how you're fulfilling the gift, but more just discretionary in the fact that you can distribute principal and choose assets of the principal to make those types of undefined distributions. So the general rule here is that distributions of assets in this vein will have a carryover basis. What that means is that the recipient beneficiary will receive the basis held by the estate or trust, and then if they later sell the asset, will recognize the gain or loss on the sale of the asset uh, that accrued during the period of ownership by the trust and estate, or during any pre prior periods of ownership for which there was a carryover basis to the trust typically. So what this means is generally you can't step up the basis of an in-kind distributed asset without recognition of gain. And this is where code section 643E comes into play because it reflects this general carryover basis rule for in-kind distribution saying that there is no recognition of gain or loss by the estate or trust, but the beneficiary receives that carryover basis. Now. There is an election that can be made by the estate or trust for all distributions for any given year under code section 643E3. What this election does is it has the effect of treating the estate or trust as if it sold distributed assets to each recipient beneficiary during the year for fair market value. What this means is that the estate would then recognize gain or loss on this deemed sale, even though in reality and substance, this was a distribution and not an actual sale. So there's a variety of reasons you might want to do that, especially right now in a down market, as we look at tax loss harvesting. And uh, you know that, that issue aside and that goal aside, that's what really sets the stage for today's private letter ruling because there's a couple key points here. One, the election is irrevocable. And two, it's usually made after the close of the tax year accompanying the income tax return, the 1041 for the trust or the estate. So when people look at this election, they typically tend to look at it in a vacuum only for gains or only for losses, but you can't do that. That's a mistake. And that's what was really illustrated today because uh, in this letter ruling, the estate looked at the, or the estate's tax preparer looked at the 643E election in a vacuum solely for purposes of trying to claim a loss. Well, that was an incomplete analysis here because what the tax preparer forgot is that there are related party rules which disallow losses. So even though there's a deemed sale here by virtue of the election for from the estate to a beneficiary for a loss, 
the estate can't actually deduct that loss because Code Section 267 disallows losses on a sale to a related party, which in this case, the estate and a beneficiary are related parties under Code Section 267. So what happened here is the estate discovered this and wanted to go back and try to revoke this prior 643E3 election. But keep in mind, as I just mentioned a minute ago, this election is irrevocable. Now, in this private letter ruling, the IRS dug back to a private, uh, prior revenue ruling, 8374, which treated a revocation of a prior election as being analogous to relief for a late election. So there's a lot of guidelines that the IRS can use to grant relief for a late election, typically that you have reasonable reliance on a tax professional who may make an error in this case, which in this case, since the estate's return preparer had been the one to suggest the 643E election for purposes of claiming that loss, uh, without considering the related party rule, relief was granted and the election could be revoked. Now that's not a complete uh, discussion of the, the relief requirements, that's just kind of the top of the bell curve uh, requirement that tends to stick out in all these types of letter rulings, but there are some key takeaways here. One, the big picture is that in any sale or exchange, even if there is a deemed exchange, which isn't actually an exchange or sale in substance between family members and an estate or an entity or even a non-grantor trust, you have to consider the facts that, that losses are disallowed between related parties. And not only that, this may also affect the gain too. You need to dig into a variety of code sections which have these related party rules. Uh, code sections 267, 707, and 1239 come into mind. And also you may have attribution rules, for example, under code section 318. All these can deal with related party relationships and change the character or even the allowance of a deduction or loss or whatever you might be trying to claim as a tax benefit in any sort of situation. Now, you might have a couple questions looking at this. One, why were we worried about a loss? An estate should have a step up in basis for the property it holds. Well, keep in mind that it takes time to administer an estate and property can go down in value during that time. So even though there's a stepped up basis, the property can go down and be below that stepped up basis, which actually increases the chance of there being losses as opposed to gains for an estate in this scenario. Uh, it could also be the same case for an estate and a revocable trust filing a joint return under code section 645. You also need to keep in mind too that if you're looking at this, it seems like the estate may have been better off just selling the asset in question to an unrelated third party and then taking the loss and deducting it. But that assumes that we are proactive here and it wasn't. This seemed to be an 11th hour decision made after the close of the tax year when filing the 1041. To have claimed that loss properly, there would have had to have been an actual sale to the unrelated third party during the tax year. This was more one of those uh, added value decisions made at the last minute before filing, which didn't actually end up adding any value. So the big lesson here and takeaway is that ultimately, if you're gonna engage in tax loss harvesting against this backdrop of this election and other factors like related party rules, it helps to be proactive and consider the big picture of all these issues that we've discussed today. As always, if you have questions or topic suggestions, you can email those to me at griffin.bridgers at gmail.com with the caveat that I cannot give tax or legal advice in response to your questions. But I thank you for listening to today's video I look forward to seeing you in my future content.